This garden has a real emphasis on autumn foliage. With 130 year old elm trees in the front yard, the rest of the garden has formal touches with a little bit of fun. I'm Chloe from Been There Dug That. Let's go behind the garden gate. We're in Bright, an alpine town three hours from Melbourne. It's chilly up here and autumn starts early. It's raining leaves here and the trick to having an incredible autumnal display is to have trees of different species that change their leaves at different times throughout autumn and even have different hues of autumn colours. And in this front yard alone, I reckon I can spot five or six different species of trees. It's really pretty. With the clipped hedges, you can start to see some of the formal elements in this garden. Nine years ago, when Christine bought this property, there wasn't really much in the garden, apart from the big established elms and maybe two or three trees in the backyard. So what she's achieved in nine years is really incredible. It really is deep shade under these elm trees. So the addition of things like lamandras and hardy plants is essential. And they need to be able to survive in pretty deep shade over the warmer months when the trees have leaves. I love also that Christine has added sculptures just to add an element of fun and interest into a dark and shady spot. I've even spotted a little fairy garden over here. Very cute. The formal but with cottage elements front yard really ties in nicely with the charming style of the house and this big wide veranda encourages us round the side to explore some more. The focus in the backyard for Christine really was about creating different rooms and spaces, both that she can enjoy from the balcony up here, but also down in the rest of the garden. This back deck has prime seating positions to sit up and admire the garden beyond. This way is full north, so here in the autumn and winter you can sit out and bask in glorious sunshine but the veranda offers protection from the summer sun when you need it. It's almost hard to believe that this area just off the deck, nine years ago when Christine moved in, there was an above ground swimming pool in there. Now in this garden, I can see a huge range of plants, euphorbias, roses, clematis, loripetalum, so many different plants. But I like the fact that she's continued that formal box hedging as the edges, which helps to tie the garden all together nicely. This Cersus forest pansy is one of Christine's favourite trees and it puts on a really beautiful display in autumn. But in springtime when it bursts into bloom, the blossom is just gorgeous. And these heart-shaped leaves are just magic. definitely not lacking in seating spaces in this garden and it's actually a lot cooler and quieter down here compared to the front yard which is more exposed to the street. The garden opens up back here with a flat lawn space that's dotted with little garden beds. It's really sweet. And again, I can spot an eclectic mix of plants. Christine said that she's that crazy plant lady that doesn't shy away from popping to the nursery and buying one plant. Not really sure where she'll pop it in, but you'd be guaranteed she'll find a spot for it.
these gates lead us on to an old veggie garden. Once upon a time, Christine did have veggies growing happily in here, but as the trees around grew up bigger and taller, they really shaded it. So now it's just got some herbs and a citrus tree that's actually still pretty happy. Behind here is Christine's composting space. And as you can imagine, with all these deciduous trees, there is a lot of leaves in autumn time. So she piles them up back in here and within a few months time, they've composted down beautifully into black gold that she can spread around everywhere. The great thing with the deciduous trees is that they tend to lose their leaves in a very short window. So yes, you might be picking up leaves and raking them up for a few weeks, but unlike eucalypts, they don't drop them year round. I saw a sign earlier that said grandma's garden and I can tell you what if this was my grandma's garden it would be so much fun. I love all the little quirky elements and in every little corner and space even hanging there are things for kids to explore. That's a really clever trick to keep them engaged and interested in your garden. beautiful ginkgo, which is often one of the last autumnal trees to change to a bright, bright yellow. This would be spectacular when it's in full colour change. And a lovely dark green magnolia here, either side of a fire pit seating space. It's another lovely little seating area back here. Christine has designed and planted this garden all herself. And actually this space is a classic design tip for you. If you've got a seating area that doesn't actually have a path that leads to it, make sure it's a spot that you can see from other parts of the garden. And also having a seating area that has a purpose and is inviting is key to getting people to move around your garden. The circular sculptures and the circular garden beds tie this area of the garden together really nicely. But now we're entering a much more formal avenue that leads us right back to the house. This is a really shady area of the garden. These giant Fertinia hedges are hiding the northern sun from hitting the ground down here. And she's got a really lovely collection of shade loving plants. I mean, I love this Fatsia with its variegated foliage. And down here is a Podophyllum spotty dotty. It's got the most incredible flowers that hide underneath the leaves. Now, apparently they don't smell very nice because they are actually pollinated by flies. So I'm not going to get close enough to find out. And down here is another great plant for a shady spot. The Lamium with its silvery leaves like this really adds a pop of brightness and reflects what light there is in a deep shaded spot. This garden bed is a great example of how you can have foliage colour year round and not just in autumnal colour. We've got a robinia and a crepe myrtle in here which will colour up for autumn colour. But in the garden bed alone, there's plants with different coloured foliage year round. For me, the standouts being the caprosma and the loripetalum. I spy a random dahlia or two that have popped up. Very sweet. You might have also noticed that there's a few objects around the garden that have clearly been painted this distinctive blue colour. And I think that's just a lovely pop of personality that really makes a garden space your own. I've really enjoyed the juxtaposition between the formal and the whimsical in this garden and I hope it's inspired you to perhaps do a similar thing at your place. And I think after seeing so many autumnal colours in this garden, I'm running out to go and buy some more deciduous plants for my place. Let me know which part of this garden has inspired you the most and make sure you like and subscribe because I've got plenty more garden tours coming your way. I'll see you next time.